Oh, 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 oh,
Personally, great I love song. the song. It was a great uh, performance, but in, let's say, a normal year without any wars, seventh to tenth place. You say that, right? Yeah, I, I, I think this was top five easily. It's I am in a, in a completely different opinion. You, you think they would have won? I, I think they, they, if, if that was not the situation, and we're not living in a time of war, and a conflict, and a really terrible time though, if we were talking about the song, and we should talk about the song, because this is a song context, guys. Let's not forget that. Uh, this song for me, it could have been, if, if, the, if his semifinal, it, it was uh, a bit tougher, like the second one, it may not qualify in for oh, the really? grand final. I'm, this I'm, is what I'm she's thinking. She's not completely wrong. Yeah. It, she's not completely wrong, but again, uh, if you want to win Eurovision, and I've been saying that for years, you want to have Russia coming out against you. We saw that in 2014 with Conchita and 2016 with Ukraine. And now, obviously, um, they took it a step further. further. And um, we all knew that they would win. I mean, again, the song is good. It's not yeah. a bad song. It's not a bad Eurovision winner, but they wouldn't have won, in my opinion. No. But I have to say that I think the song is unique and it has something. It's a beautiful, I, I love the chorus. I like the fact that we have a good rap. We have been talking yes, about that. Yes, I love, Finally, I love a rap, rap song wins. Finally, a rap song wins. <laughs> and also, yeah, I think it was a unique performance. It's good. But I, I, I hear you. I hear what you're it's saying. It's a great performance. It's a good song. Mm. Is it your vision winner when you have to approach uh, or you need to approach people the age of 7 to 70 and the jurors? Do you, do you know what, guys, I would love, love to uh, see happens? I would love the winner song to be such a good song that it's getting not uh, just all over, um, you know, Eurovision community, which I love, by the way, but all over the world. But it to be, to be in an international hit, like Euphoria, mm -hmm. like it, it Waterloo, you know, this is what I would love to see, like Maneskin songs. Uh, but, but it happened so many times in recent years. So many uh, times Duncan, not. With yeah. Duncan, with, with Neta, Duncan as well. with Eleni. Yeah. It, it happened this, a lot in recent yeah, years. This Eurovision, is, it's a great platform. I, I would love to see uh, a real Eurovision legacy. You know, yeah, here. I get that. Well, one thing's for sure. Um, OutTV viewers supported Ukraine from the start and making them the winner of the Out Music Award. And the Out Music Award, for those who n do not know, Shame, 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 <laughs> if, if, if that's the case. But the Art Music Award is the award that goes from the LGBTQ plus community of who they think should win the Eurovision Song Contest. And this year it went to Kalush Orchestra from Ukraine. We're standing in front of the photo studio where Kalush Orchestra is having a shoot inside. We're standing here because the award was a little bit delayed, but Gert, our producer, you made it. Thank you so much for that. You have the award? I do. Okay. Don't waste any time. Let's go. Um, the award, the official moment. <laughs> it's for you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, do you have some words to thank for. Uh, thank you everyone. I thank everyone who supports Ukraine and I send my best wishes to all of you. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the song and make us all proud and make your home country proud. All right. <laughs> So once again, you at home were right all along. So guys, let's take a look at the top 10 of this year.
volte non si esprime di Okay, guys, what do we think of the top 10 favorites? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, I love Spain and Chanel. I thought that performance was perfection. She owned the stage. So for me, that's my personal favorite. But uh, there are many good ones. But I have to say, I did not think Serbia was going to be in the top five. That was a surprise for me. It was a good song. It was a strong song, strong performance. Plus the clapping. Eurovision loves clapping. Oh, right? yeah. With yeah. Mahmoud in 2019, uh, okay. we love clapping. This is a gimmick that never gets old. Never, ever. <laughs> um, for me, I, I wasn't a fan of the Spanish entry. Uh, <gasps> the performance was perfect. Get out of this table. <laughs> <laughs> He's not he, gay. He's not mm, really gay. <laughs> you with the bad taste, you get out. Uh, the, <laughs> I'll give you that. Her yeah. performance was perfection. Yeah. But it covered the song, which wasn't eh. No, I the was song was actually quite mediocre. When I heard it first time, I was like, okay. But then but when it you was saw the, the show. performance, it was the same show. happened with Fuera. That uh, was the same that's thing. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Uh, it's the song. For me, it was before the contest, it was uh, Sweden, which I loved it. The performance, eh. But then the UK came. And it's like an Elton John song. I loved the British entry. I really wanted them to win. They yeah. deserved it after all these years. It would have been a good winner indeed yes. as well. Polly, what do you think? I think that they might make the contest though. Because they're second. I don't think the what, winners next year? I, I don't think the winners will be able to uh, host it. No. But I who mean, is your favorite? Um I love the Swedish entry, but I have to tell you which uh, song is giving me goosebumps every time I'm listening to it, and that's the Portugal entry. So yes. that, I mean, so there is something amazing in this song, which is, you know, making me feel in a special way. But yeah. can we talk about the staging as well? Like they had very nothing. smart. It was very so smart. Very smart, smart for the song. They're, they were using the small stage, and yeah. if you wanna have an advantage, and it forces the director with the cameras to film you in in a certain angles very close they were very smart they did that in 2017 when they won yes so it was very smart the song was brilliant mm. but let's give it also to uh, the netherlands with a great entry in dutch yes. which was absolutely brilliant and giving me goosebumps yeah yeah i like the song very much and the la the, the, the the lady is uh she was giving it, it emotionally in a very very good she's way an to, artist. The, to the audience she's, a, she's an artist yeah exactly. Literally. Yeah, and I think people, even though people don't understand Dutch, they could really feel what she was feeling, and I think that made I it so special. I didn't understand what she was thinking about, but when I saw her face mm. and the emo, especially at the end, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that's a true cried. artist. Yeah, that, that's she an almost artist. cried. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, a lot went wrong. We cannot <laughs> avoid that. I mean, I'm talking about Israel disqualifying. Non-qualifying. Non-qualifying. We were not disqualified. Yes. I'm from Israel. Uh, we were not disqualified. We didn't qualify. Yeah, there is a difference. I stand corrected. I yeah. stand corrected. So, can you please explain what exactly went wrong? He's a great singer. We also yeah. he knows how to sing, and he's a great performer. Um, the song wasn't strong. We all knew that in Israel. Um, and I think that the, 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 this thing in the semi-final, when he approached the hosts, he claimed uh, that they've invited him. They didn't say that. I think he, he misinterpreted a gesture or a, a say, I don't know what happened, but we were all watching it and we were like, oh, oh no, yeah. that's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think that went wrong. Okay. Uh, there were also a lot of irregular, uh, there was an irregular voting pattern 
they claimed, with uh, six countries. Same as every year. Same the, as every year. If it's not irregularity, it's uh, countries swapping points, it's countries uh, selling points. I was offered as head of press many times to swap, sell or do things, which I never did. Um, but I do know of countries who have done that. Uh, they Normally they don't win or uh, do well. Okay. Uh, but it has happened, you know, Countries, it's like a moot point. countries want to win because they understand how important it is to host the Eurovision, yes. what it gives. Yeah. So they are trying a lot. What? All yeah. the Eurovision drama, you know, it's always there. <laughs> <laughs> but what is Eurovision without but, the drama? But we, we can all agree that this organization was not at its best. Right? You're, look, you're looking at me because... Well, <laughs> no, no, but I, mean, I, think I, don't, compared, I don't mind saying that. For but, example, but compared, uh, compared to the Netherlands, I mean, ne the Netherlands compares get, to Tel Aviv. Uh, Tel Aviv was brilliant, of course. <laughs> yeah. The show no, was no, brilliant. No, 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 brilliant was Stockholm in 2016. Also brilliant. Yes, yes, yes. 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 I mean, yes. there are some nations and some uh, professionalists in that field which are, you know, in a such high level and they just don't, they just know what they do. But the Swedes yeah. know how to, yeah. to throw an event. And everything works. On Every single yeah. platform. Everything so works. let's let's talk about your experience, Polly, uh, because you experienced it in 2011, 2016. How is Eurovision, according to you, as an artist? Because you see it through different eyes than than we do. There is a big difference between uh, the contest back in 2011 in Germany yeah. and then six, five years later yeah. in yeah. Sweden. Um, of course, since 2011, a lot of things changed with the technology, with the cameras, with the staging opportunities, uh, which we now can observe and see how the stage can be. You know. 2011, was it like um, foreplay? I was, listen, I was uh, pretty young back then. Yeah. Um, that was my first big stage, yeah. I have to admit. And, um, it was it was really too much for a uh, for an artist which is coming from a small country. Even if I'm in this business since I was four years old, so um, I've seen a lot. Uh, and uh, yeah, but this a lot is nothing compared to the uh, you know international level of work and professionalism. So Germany for me was the first big step I took. Yeah. And. I am actually very grateful that I didn't qualify back then because I, I learned to lose. I've learned my lesson, uh, what is important, what you should focus on, which are the moments you should be enjoying most, and this and that, and I mean a lot. So imagine if now when I'm going for the third time, and I, I, me you and will? my team, we, yeah, we, we took the decision for that. Imagine what I can already make on stage. She uh, said uh, something uh, very uh, smart. Uh, stop, stop, stop. Yes, wait, indeed. wait, wait. What is happening? Are you going go back to Eurovision? I cannot speak anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do we yes, have a scoop I'm here? Cheers for that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Wow, well, we, we got a scoop yeah. here. Right? Speaking about a great comebacks, let's talk about another great comeback, the UK. <laughs> I'd be floating in midair And a broken heart would just belong To someone else down there I would be the center of my lonely universe But I'm only human And I'm crashing down to earth Sam, how are you? I am fantastic. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, it's amazing. You're doing so well in the arts. Is that is that an extra pressure? I, I don't read anything online, so I, of course I keep hearing about the odds, and while I'm flattered and it's wicked, and thank you so much, but it's not like the main reason that I wanted to be involved. Gratitude to even be there in the first place, doing something I love more than anything else in this entire world, which is just singing and expressing and feeling free through singing and feeling joy and uh, getting to do that alongside wickedly talented people. Sam, you, you're such an amazing creature. I mean, uh, I, yeah, you know, I, I, I started to follow you when you got announced to go to Eurovision and it happened all so fast with you. Like, you started in 2020 with covering songs on social media and um, 
suddenly you are one of the most famous people on Eurovision. I mean, the thing is, I mean, it's wild because it, this started with me singing Hit Me Baby One More Time in my mum's kitchen, as high as I could. My loneliness is killing me and I, I must confess, I still believe. Like, I was standing in the arena today, like, looking around. I was thinking, this is weird. Like, I was singing in my mum's kitchen <laughs> or in the corner of my shed all through lockdown. So, like, you can never... I, I never had any expectation that that would happen, you know? I will never forget how blessed I feel to be in this position. So thank you if you supported. When I'm not with you, I lose my mind. We are an LGBTQ plus network. We always joke that Eurovision is the biggest gay pride in Europe, <laughs> but hidden, hidden gay pride. Uh, do you experience that as well? I think it's just, it's like a feeling of inclusivity everywhere. And that's amazing. Like for me, that's what all of this is about. I think it takes in everyone that loves it. And that's important to feel like you're part of like a family. No pressure, but there's a possibility that you will take the victory to UK again. Do you have already like a sentence or a high note or whatever to to shout out to Europe or a message or whatever? Um, I I don't want to think about it too much because it would it would kill the magic. Like for me, saying yes to this opportunity was never about where I'd come on the scoreboard. It was like. It has to be for me the same intention with which I was singing in that corner of my shed in front of the little green lamp, you know? So give me a sign, hit me baby one more time. All right, Sam Ryder. It, it went so fast for him, like from his mom kitchen straight to Eurovision in one year almost. Um, all because of social media and I'm just looking at the yeah. two beautiful girls at the table yeah. social media stars especially you Krista you were a little bit ad addicted <laughs> to, to <laughs> social media addicted, I mean I she's constantly say, like ah! I have to say I like social media and I have a good relationship to yes. it uh, and I think you um, because a lot of people get stressed over it oh I'm on there all the time yeah. and I'm like, you know like yeah I am. but if you are in control of it then it's a really good thing yeah. and I think for Eurovision it's important that an artist is active on social media Invisible. promote yourself do fun things you know mm -hmm. to get people to to like you so they can vote for you and you see what happened to sam Ryder. yes that was because of that of course he's a fantastic singer the song was great the staging but also because he's so active but it's with also the fans. a year it's also a year it's the first time that the first rehearsals were on TikTok. yeah like we had to as a journalist we had to make a TikTok to see the first rehearsals um, I've never experienced the importance of social media than this year. I don't know how it was in 2011 or 2016. 2011, no social media. No, so no, no, no. I mean, there was a Facebook, but yeah. it was like uh, I'm posting for my mother my yes. state, status. I mean, yeah. in a photo yes. from uh, our birthday party. Yeah. It's It was completely different back then. Uh, I can imagine what was in the uh, in the end of 90s, for instance, or 2000s. I mean, it was my first My first Eurovision was 95 as a 17-year-old, year old, and I I couldn't disagree more on you, on what you just said about Sam Ryder. Couldn't disagree more because nobody knew who he was. Nobody, nobody gave the fuck. Only after Eurovision, his fans followed yeah. him, which was fantastic. And, but he has millions of followers that in the helped, UK of and, and and fine. But Not we have UK. 200 million viewers for Eurovision. 99.9 percent didn't know who he was. Look, it wasn't about social media, it was about how I don't know. great I don't he know. was. I have to correct you there, uh, Alon, because uh, when we look at Monoskin, they were also the most popular band, well, the most popular performers, if you look at Instagram uh, followers. And? Well, they won. And Sam because Ryder, they had Sam Ryder uh, came in second. No, they, they had Monoskin, it was just perfection of course yeah, they were good of course, of course they were good it is it is but, but it helps to have a lot of fans all over the world who will also vote for you or maybe it's it's just pr is it is it all about uh, like i always think 
as Eurovision as like a presidential campaign and that the artist is on, only as strong as their team behind them like you first have of a good all, yes. PR team first of all yes okay and no <laughs> <laughs> and no it's it's um i've learned in recent years that it doesn't matter how much pr you'll do yeah. it won't help it's really? all, mm, yeah not going to help and as head of press i'm saying that okay. to win you can get a lot out of eurovision thanks to the pr campaign but in order to win what you do need now um in in recent years okay we'll listen very carefully yeah It's We're you. listening. <laughs> you need to get the hype. As soon as the song released, you need to get the biggest hype as it's like the bookies would say that it's the best song and the fans will say should say it's the best song because what gave um the victory to Ukraine and 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 a lot of other singers is the hype. The crowd at home, the viewers and the juries, once you keep saying uh for a month or two months prior to Eurovision this is going to win this is going to they know that they need to vote for this and this country and this and this artist okay but answer me this alon um you say you have to have the hype i agree on that you I, have to I have a good understand. song and a good performance to, as well to get a hype you need a good pr team mm. and so and and visibility on social media right no. yes and you ha- no okay you Probably. have to have a good conception about it the idea the message Yeah. They both has to be very clear okay. and to know which direction you're going. Okay. What do you want to say to the audience with your project? But Krista, she was so much on on Instagram and and TikTok and whatever you did, but um we had some footage about your great time <laughs> here in Turin. <laughs> Krista, you yeah. saw Loreen live. Yeah, it was great. Well, I can do you better. Huh? I had a drink with her. Ooh. Hi, Loreen. How are you? I'm great. I'm wonderful. Nice to be here with you. You look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. <laughs> This year is a special year. It's the 10th anniversary of your victory as a Eurovision Song Contest winner with oh. Euphoria. How do you look back on that? It feels like it was yesterday. Yesterday this happened. Time is flying so fast. Are you kidding me? But I'm still me and, you know, I still enjoy the song, you know, although I would like to sing it for myself sometimes, you know, whenever I sing it on stage, the, the audience sings it louder than me. I'm like, "Shut up, guys. Let me sing my song." <laughs> I want to sing my song. No. No. Well, there you have shower time for, no? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I can do it in the shower. Yeah, you're right. I'll do that. <laughs> um is there anything that you you would say I I would do differently? I mean, you took a certain direction. Yeah. Um very authentic yeah. and I praise you for that yeah. but not always commercially wise no. the well let, let's say not the smartest moves but you stay true to yourself yeah. but looking back on it yeah. are you happy with the decisions you made 
Yeah, I, I actually am. Because at some point, the, th the thing is, with Euphoria, there was a certain revelation for me. And the revelation with Euphoria was that you have to stay true to yourself. Euphoria was not, was not a compromise whatsoever. So for me, standing there with you guys and, and winning was like a, uh, that feeling of being true to yourself is so important, at least for me. I, I, I realized I cannot compromise. That is not even an option. So my career is an organic development of me, see? So, I mean, if success was the goal, yeah, then it would have been different. But it has never been. Uh, Loreen, there's a war happening at the moment, uh, Ukraine. How is your point of view? Because there's a whole debate about whether it's okay for them to let them win because of the moral support. Other people say, no, let the contest be a contest. Should the contest stay political free? And even if it stays political free, is that a reality? I don't think it's political. I don't think, I, I just think it's, it's just, question of human rights. What is going on in Ukraine is that people are dying, you know, there's a war and it, and this it is, a, we have to take a collective responsibility for that. We have to do everything within our power to, to, to try to create some sort of change. I'm not saying go down to Ukraine and pick some people up. I'm not saying that. Whatever your knowledge is, what you should ask yourself, what can I do in this situation? Oh, what I can do is I can post something that is real. Okay, then do that. What I can do is I, I'm very rich. I can give money. Okay, then do what I could do as a doctor. I can go down there. I can save some people. Whatever we, we can do. I mean, and I feel if, if this, if Ukraine winning in this competition in any way, balance things up or helps the Ukrainian people or whatever, then please let them win. So, Krista, do you agree with Loreen? Uh, Is it political or not? Eurovision Song Contest? Eurovision. Yeah, definitely. I, I, you cannot have an event like this and leave out the politics. It's always just going to be there and it's always going to be in art and music culture. Yes. Right, and, uh, She used yeah, the Eurovision did, for political myself. reasons. I did, Just I did. Just a little reminder, you kissed yeah. another girl. Yeah, too. of course I did. And, and we did it because we wanted to show the world that gay marriage should be allowed everywhere. But, but especially in Finland, because it wasn't. Yeah. And that was our statement. Yeah. And we thought, yeah, this platform, bam, let's do it here so, so everybody can see it. But the EBU always claims no politics. Yeah. yeah but that's the, bullshit. Okay. And in the same time, they, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, dismantled Russia from taking part this year, but allowed Ukraine to be part of it. Which, in my opinion, when there is such a big conflict, you should stay neutral. And it, it wasn't the EBU, they stayed neutral. It was a, a lot no, of countries, no, the Scandinavians, who said either us yeah, or you're Russia. Right. Yeah, you're right, but they should have a position that to stay neutral. In, in, in neutral. And in my, if, if I were on their their place yes. and I could have had the decision, I could have allowed, for instance, Ukraine to perform for sure, but not to be in the competition, because this is not fair to all of the other countries. I and see. The other Life artists. is not fair. <laughs> Life is not, that's certainly true. Nothing but is it, fair. It's very difficult when you say, when Ukraine um, asks or claims that Russia shouldn't take part in Eurovision. and. Um, the, the EBU refuses and then suddenly the Netherlands and other countries are saying well if Russia performs then we won't participate then it's very difficult for the EBU to say well we, we lose like eight or ten yeah, yeah. I, I'm not judging them for that. Yeah. I'm sure that they has to be, you know, in the middle of so many other opinions and this but still the competition should have been more fair for everybody else. You know, there is a conflict, but you should not you should not take but place in that. Didn't Eurovision start out as a, a tool to bring Europe together, and to they just united. decided they, they, to, yeah. they decided to make that tool as a competition? But 
I, the first rule was no politics. Yes. It's the most political event exactly. in the world. Yeah. And I have a lecture exactly. about it. It's the, uh, exactly. Yeah. So the win, the victory of Kalush Orchestra to come back, make a beautiful circle. It is what it is. It is political, you say. Of course. Yeah. We agreed on that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 of course. To answer. Um, yeah, but of course, Europe wanted to show support for Ukraine. That's yeah. that's clear. It's not a bad thing. And Being it's not political, a bad thing. it's not no. a bad thing. Okay. Actually, I think it was a beautiful thing that whole Europe exactly. stood there and showed it that we are. We stand with. Yeah, it we did stand unite with Europe you, yeah. at yeah. the end. Yeah, it did. Against Russia. Yeah. But it did unite Europe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Zelensky said um, yesterday. Uh, Mariupol, Mariupol, the Mariupol, Mariupol, yeah, yeah. Uh, is a city that should host the Eurovision Song Contest. Is that reasonable? Good luck with that. that. <laughs> <laughs> really good luck with that. Where? <laughs> is there a venue? Is there a hotel? Is there, <laughs> is an, there an apartment yeah. left? The, I mean, I mean, it's it's a horrible. Scene. We're laughing, but it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the thought is beautiful. Exactly. He but has is it to say doable? It. no. Yeah. Not a chance. What, you, what, what is your prediction? Uh, the EBU had discussions that what happens if Australia wins? And and they agreed that it would be hosted by Germany. I would have thought that it, it'll be the same thing here, but since the UK came second, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be uh, if the UK won't be able to host it in, um, in the UK, either in Manchester or Cardiff, uh, not in Germany. That's my reason. Okay. Uh, it sounds reasonable for me. Well, we'll we'll see. Unfortunately, our time for today is up. Oh. up, oh. up. Oh. <laughs> but I'm so grateful that you were here. I think it was a beautiful conclusion of our road to Eurovision. Christos' road to Eurovision. And now the uh, post-depression starts. And now the, <laughs> well, you you can think of, of of maybe also entering Eurovision like with Polly. How great yeah, would, would never that know. be? Let's do a duet for Eurovision. Ooh. Yeah, we already then. have the, the idea, darling. It's not something no, no, You didn't okay. invent it. <laughs> yeah. Don't get involved, Bellum. Don't get involved. Well, I, I, thank, I thank Polly, Genova, of course, Alon Amir, and of course the beautiful Christa thank Siegfried. You, thank you yes. for making this show happening oh, with me. <laughs> we have it, had a great time. Well, it was a great, uh, great, great experience. Before we go, I have some great footage of you. Again? <laughs> yeah, I find on the internet you exploring an hotel room or something. Oh, well, yes. And a see very nice you room. later in uh, Maripool calling or Manchester calling, Stockholm calling, Dusseldorf calling. Cardiff. Cardiff, Cardiff calling. <laughs> see you then. Love, love, peace, peace. Bye. Now to the most important thing. How good is the hair dryer? Hello, I'm Krista. Welcome to my hotel room. And hidden behind this beautiful door is the mini bar. My favorite place. Champagne? And I love the high ceiling in this room because it gives the room great acoustic. And then I can stand here and sing my songs all day long. Marry me, I'll be a queen bee. I love you endlessly. And this hallway is great because here you can strike a pose, you can dance, or take a look at my beautiful clothes. Hmm, let's see, what am I gonna wear tonight? Something nice, as always. Also very good acoustic. Oh my god, this shower is perfect. Hmm, let's see what they have here. Oh, nice product. Oh my god, Roberto Cavalli. This is mine now. And now to the most important thing. How good is the hair dryer? Let me check. I changed to something much more comfortable. Hiya! <laughs> I'm a little hungry. I'm gonna order room service. Let's see what they have here. Mm, burger, mm, pizza, nom nom nom. And the Wi Fi is really fast, by the way. I'm gonna order now. 
Buena sera. Let's see how loud we can watch your vision. I could get used to living in hotel rooms like this, but now it's time to explore the city. Ciao!